one of the great traits in Islam, something we direly need today, a very powerful characteristic in Muslim personality, something despite, despite its softness, it has ultimate power and can give us so much strength in our seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and handling, and handling the affairs of this ummah. We'll talk about it today, so stay tuned. I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand Where's my place in your great plan? Oh Lord, help this man Lord, I am just a simple man Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of One Step Closer. I'm your host, Karim Eid. Many of the Islamic values and, pris- and principles have been, many- have been under- misunderstood by many people. Most of the morals of Islam have been deprived of their full meaning. So here, in One Step Closer, we will try to present a new perspective, a new uh, perception of these morals and values. We will try to go in depth to understand them, and to maintain them, and practice them, and to ingrain them in our lives. We will try to understand them so they can take us steps closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Jannah, towards the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and His Sunnah, and towards a better understanding of the Qur'an, and towards manipulating them in our lives. And I'd like to remind all the viewers that you can call us during the second and third segments of this show on these numbers, country code, 202-38-555, 202-38-555-248-248-249. Or, or you can simply send us an email at onestepcloser at toda.tv. And let's welcome Shaykh Mu'tasim Al-Hamidi. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you very much, Kiri. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters, today we're going to be talking about a special characteristic that we should all have, that, should, that we should all be characterized with, with A characteristic that only the generous and the noble have. A characteristic that we all need to have in this time that we are living, which is forgiveness. We need to all forgive one another. We need to tolerate one another. We need to have big hearts and open minds. We need to be open-minded. Forgiveness is a special principle in Islam. So why forgiveness is very important in Islam? Forgiveness is one of the most important Islamic principles. And the beauty of this word or of this principle is so profound that Allah, some of the secrets of, of the creation, of the greatness of Allah and His ability to create is, uh, is, is so apparent and evident. Because forgiveness or al-afu is considered by many people as a sign of weakness or as a very soft kind of trait. But it is one of the most powerful characteristics and it actually, actually it empowers the person who have this. And the Prophet ﷺ promised so, and inshallah we will explain about this. So Al-Afu is a very important principle in Islam. All of us need it. And definitely we cannot survive without Al-Afu. Life won't be bearable without the concept of pardon, Al-Afu. That we forgive people. Even when they wrong us, we forgive them. When they fall into some kind of error, we forgive them. We have bigger hearts. And we accommodate other people's mistakes. We try to give them the benefit of the doubt. We try to overlook some of their mistakes. Why? Because we focus on something more important. Because we understand our own weaknesses and we understand that others have similar weaknesses and shortcomings. That's the nature of human beings. We, we, we're not perfect. So this is why we have mistakes. And without forgiveness, we won't be able to appreciate this life and life would be something unbearable unless we live in an ocean of forgiveness. If you want to bring happiness to your life, to your personal life, to your family and to your society, definitely you need to spread around this beautiful principle of forgiveness, al-afu. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us and the Prophet ﷺ commands us many times, frequently, to hold on to Al-Afu. And we have great principles in Islam on Al-Afu. And one of the most important things that uh, show us and prove to us the importance of Al-Afu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is described as Al-Afu. He is the one who forgives people. He overlooks their mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns a blind eye to these people's mistakes, to our mistakes. 
So why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the uh, Al-Ghafoor, He's Al-Afu, he's, al- he's the most generous. Because He created us and He knows our shortcomings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by means of His forgiveness, He's giving us more opportunity and more chance to prove our obedience and our dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So forgiveness or al af brings happiness. And it's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the afu and He wants us to have this quality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to forgive one another, to forgive one another. We should treat people the way we want to be treated because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely treat you the way you were treating people. So we should be forgiving. We should be forgiving to one another. We should overlook our mistakes. We should overlook the, the mistakes that other people have. We should not uh, pick on, on each one's mistakes. No, we should be open heart. We should be big hearted. We should not have uh, this, this feel of anger towards others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves forgiveness. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the Quran about forgiveness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to hold on to al-afu, to make it a trait that you never do away with. That's, that's something constant in your life, something you embrace and never let go of. This is why he says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and every command, in Islam, every command directed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in principle is directed to the rest of the Muslims. Allah says, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفْ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Take to al-afu, hold on to it, embrace it, make it a way of life, make it a style of living for yourself. So you become known by al-afu. It becomes one of the characteristics that distinguish you, that sets you apart from the rest of humanity. That you are a fool, that you are a, a person who forgives others, you pardon others, your heart is so big that it can really uh, overlook the mistakes of others and you appreciate, you understand their weaknesses, so you tolerate many of their mistakes. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to have and He commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also to have this. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran, when He praises the believers, Allah praises them by mentioning some of their great characteristics that really make them special among the rest of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنَّ nas. These are the ones who suppress their anger and uh, they forgive people. So it has become... Oh, they have become known by that. So they forgive people. They're so forgiving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises these people. In another verse in Surah Al-Shura, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you can take back your rights. So if someone wrongs you, someone takes some of your rights, you take it back. Someone, for example, uh, harms you. You have the right to harm them back. But obviously there are general regulations with regards to this. But this is, uh, 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 this is in principle what the ruling is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if someone wrongs you, you can wrong them back. But you have to, so that you become equal. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after that, that the ones who take back their rights, they haven't done anything wrong. They are okay. No one should try to uh, deal with them or stop them from doing this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, فَمَنْ أَصْلَحَ وَعَثَى فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ So the one who forgives and, overcome, or, or, and overlooks the mistakes and he brings reconciliation, then his reward is from Allah. Far greater than taking back his right. That's the beauty of al-afu, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa taala wants the believers to have. Even at the end of these verses, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Wala man sabara wa ghafar, fa inna dhalika lamin azm al-umur." The one who, or the ones who have patience and they forgive others, then these ones, this is a sign of strong faith and strong character, azm al-umur. This is one of the hardest obligations or the hardest traits that people find it very difficult to embrace. So if you reach that level, you have reached the level of Ihsan in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in dealing well with the rest of humanity. So when we talk about forgiveness, we have to mention our role model, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the perfect example in forgiveness. The day when he opened Mecca, the day when he came to Mecca with 10,000 soldiers, he, the, the disbelievers, they thought that that's it. We're, that's it, it's time for revenge. That the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would revenge for what we have done to him. We have tortured the Muslims, we have killed the Muslims. So the, the, the pagans said, that's it, we're done, we're doomed. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told them, no, you're all free. That's the, that's the example of forgiveness. So what did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell us about forgiveness? Yes, the Prophet Sallallahu was the best example, obviously, in, in having 
uh, or showing and displaying this beautiful Islamic principle, forgiveness. Because the, the natural tendency or the gut reaction of any human being is to take revenge, is to be selfish, to be self-centered. So they, they're always worried about and they're always concerned about you know, taking for themselves and achieving uh, goals for themselves. And even if this means to destroy other people's rights or overcome other, people, uh, other people's rights and transgress their limits. So the Prophet ﷺ was the best in showing al-Afu. It's a higher level when you uh, forgive people or the people who wronged you. This is exactly how the Prophet ﷺ was and this is what he explained and he explained the wisdom and the rationale behind that. In the famous hadith narrated by Muslim when the Prophet ﷺ says, مَا نَقَصَ مَالُ مَنْ صَدَقَهُ that no, you know, sadaqah, charity will never decrease your wealth. The Prophet ﷺ made that evidently and he said that in a definitive format. Imp- it's impossible for a sadaqah to decrease your money because there's a lot of barakah in it definitely. And the Prophet ﷺ says, وَمَا زَادَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا عِزَّةً Many people think if they forgive, then this will bring them humiliation. This will cause them to be seen as weak. But the Prophet ﷺ assures us that this is not the case. He says, in a very definitive and emphatic style, he says Allah does not increase a person who has or displays afu, forgiveness. Allah will only increase him more honor and dignity. So if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring your rights, forgive people, Allah will take care of your affairs and Allah will help you. Allah will increase you, increase you in honor. But some people uh, display, uh, they display al-afu, forgiveness and pardon only when they are unable to take their right back. So they say, okay, if I, if I can't take my right back, I forgive. It's happening anyway, so just say, I forgive. I will, I will give you al-afu, okay, I'm alright, I, I pardon you. But that's not the case. But when they have the ability, they don't forgive people. That's not al-afu. Al-afu is when you are able to take back your rights. Here, you give this, you show this, display this generosity and this nobility in your soul and in your understanding of the great attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is al-afu because He's the one who can destroy humanity. He can punish them for mistakes, but He always forgives and, over, and uh, overlooks their mistakes. That's the greatness of this beautiful principle. Al-af, forgiveness. We all need to have forgiveness. We all need to forgive one another. But sometimes it seems hard for people to forgive others then we need to ask a question. How can we train ourselves to forgive others? The best way to attain forgiveness is first to have and develop knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have noticed, throughout this series, the key to all these great principles, great characteristics, great acts of worship that most people don't see them as acts of worship, the, the secret and the essence of all of these is knowledge about Allah being attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just understanding that Allah is al-afu. He's the one, how many times you've made so many mistakes, so many errors, so many times you've transgressed the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times, how often did you do that? Most of the time we do that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. And Allah overlooks your mistakes. And Allah lets that go, okay? And Allah forgives you. Allah pardons you. So as Allah pardons you, pardon His creation. Allah loves to see us acting to his servants as he acts towards us. And this is why uh, the Prophet ﷺ taught Aisha, when she asked him, what if I manage, what if I feel that this is the night of, Al- of Al-Qadr, the decree, the night of the decree, what should I say? The Prophet ﷺ taught her beautiful supplication, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are afu, you are the person who often forgives and overlooks people's mistakes. تُحِبُّ الْعَفْوَ And you love Al-Afu. You love it, so Allah loves it. It's a great act of worship. It brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَعْفُ anni. So overlook my mistakes. Forgive me. Pardon me. So you do the same with people because this is one of the attributes of Allah that Allah loves us to try to practice and try to acquire and embrace. So life in this world will become a pleasant experience and will bring us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to paradise. So forgiveness is a great characteristic that we should all have. F- to have a peaceful society, we need to forgive one another. We should not hold grudges against others. We should 
be forgiven. We should be forgiven. We should have amnesty to forgive one another, not to think of everyone's mistakes. If you think of every, everyone's mistakes, just think that you do mistakes yourself too. You yourself wrong people sometimes. If you have that in mind, then you will be forgiving. Then you will never think about revenge. You will never think about avenging for your own self. Just forgive. It's a great characteristic that the Prophet that the Prophet ﷺ had, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even characterized with forgiveness. So we all should forgive one another. And if you want to learn more about forgiveness, please stay with us until we come back from the short break. Stay tuned. Oh, I am just a simple man trying hard to understand. Closing the gap. Why closing the gap? In this program, Sheikh Yusuf Estes and Omar Dunlap are going to discuss how to bridge the gap between peoples of different cultures and orientations. The gap between males and females, Muslims and non-Muslims, the East and the West. Human beings feel like that they're being slighted one way or the other. The gap between the youth and the elders, the gap between various status in working, the work field and education, and then trying to provide solutions for these particular problems. All of this and more in Closing the Gap in Ramadan on Hoda TV. We need to strive to know the ruling of the Sharia on a particular incident. Why scholars had to put a lot of effort trying to figure out how to give the ruling on such topics and issues. Islam tells you to look good, to smell good. The reason of the recession was the collaboration between insurance companies and the banks. Some scholars, though stated that it is permissible for you to insure because you're compelled to do this by the government by law but you're not allowed to benefit from the insurance policy women around the prophet what do you know about women in Islam? Do you know the role that women played in Islamic history? Sheikh Ismail Rafai will relate the stories of the Prophet's wives in the program, Women Around the Prophet. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, the person he decided that this Quran should stay with and be left with was none other than our mother Hafsa bint al Khattab. So this whole Quran was left with her. This is a great trust. Khadija bint Khuwailid. She is Afqa Nisail Ummah. She's the most knowledgeable of this Ummah. Because she is my mother, your mother, and the mother of all the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Women around the Prophet in Ramadan on Hoda TV. Love, I am just a simple man trying hard to understand. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to One Step Closer. We're here talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness, a great quality, a great moral of Islam that we all should have. How can we acquire forgiveness? Yes, it's very important. It should be the uh, one of the most important aspirations that uh, or things that a Muslim, every Muslim seeks to train themselves to acquire and develop this beautiful act. Because it's not easy to go against your desire of forgiving other people's rights. Because naturally, we are inclined to take revenge. We're inclined to uh, try to uh, secure a better portion for ourselves or whatever it is. Uh, we always try, like to be the winners. That's mm -hmm. human nature. So once you go against that, it's a struggle. But it's, it's, it's just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remembering that Allah loves forgiveness, Allah loves al-afu, mm -hmm. would be one of the most important uh, tools to bring us this beautiful, or to help us attain this beautiful concept, al-afu. Uh, once we realize that Allah gives abundant, abundantly for the people who have al-afu, 
then definitely this will bring us to heaven. For remember, every time, this is a statement that is very common from the early generations. They said, if you have power over others to take revenge, then remember Allah's ability to take revenge of you. Mm-hmm. So forgive people, mm-hmm. forgive them. So once you forgive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you even far greater. Everything you give for the sake of Allah, Allah will uh, multiply that for you many times. Mm-hmm. So just remembering that Allah loves these acts of worship. Allah loves some of the, His attributes, Allah loves us to have them. Like mm-hmm. ar rahimuna yarhamuhumullah. Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbul jamal. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves al-afu, Allah loves forgiveness, and Allah loves the people who forgive others. So once you realize this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy when you forgive. Mm-hmm. So He will give you abundantly. Imagine, mm-hmm. and when, when, when you say Allah will give you abundantly, you're talking about the most generous. So this is probably mm-hmm. one of the most important tools in attaining forgiveness. And I believe we have a phone call. We have Sister Sabah from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. alaykum. Uh, assalamu alaykum and assalamu alaykum to you, Sheikh. Um, alaykum assalam. Wa has been a great uh, uh, eye-opening for all of us, especially bringing us really closer to God. Allah, maybe Allah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, I have noticed that every prophet uh, told to his people, believe in Allah and seek forgiveness. Whether it was Nuh al-Islam, who is al-Islam, or Salih al-Islam. And it's mentioned innumerable times in the Quran. Uh, okay, and sister, sister can, can you speak up? Can you speak up? Because yes, yes, I can. Yes, I please. think every prophet has, uh, every prophet has said uh, to, seek, uh, to believe in Allah and seek forgiveness uh, the next uh, step. Uh, yeah. I would like to ask that what is the proper etiquette of seeking forgiveness for your mistakes from Allah and for the fit- mistakes that you commit against people because each person, some or the other point in his life always does some kind of mistake and he needs forgiveness. So what is the proper etiquette of following uh, uh, that we should do? And Jazakallah khair. Salaam alaykum. Before we answer Sister Sawah, we have Sister Wafa from Egypt. Assalamu alaykum. Welcome, welcome to One Step Closer. Um, uh, nice topic as usual. Um, I don't like to divert the attention to an, another way. But uh, since Ramadan is about to depart and leave us, and this show will stop by the end of Ramadan, I want to thank you all, uh, Sheikh Matasim, Brother Kareem, all the staff of One Step Closer. You really... You've really done a wonderful job throughout Ramadan, and and this show will will definitely will be missed after it. And um, Allah um, may Allah reward you. Um, I can say that uh, each episode of this uh, program works as an eye opener in clarifying uh, a lot of misconception about mm-hmm. the many of Islamic uh, morals or mm-hmm. Islamic principles. Um, it's um, very inspiring, very motivational. Jazakumullahu khair. May Allah reward you with the best of reward in this life and in the hereafter. May Allah accept from you all and from you and all of us our good deeds. Jazakumullahu khair. Um, just first to say, I, I'm, I'm very glad, I'm, I'm very happy, I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He made this series beneficial. I myself benefited from it. And uh, I really feel happy. And it, to me, it's like a good sign that people manage to benefit from that. Uh, I still remember uh, the words of Sufyan Thawri. One day he was asked, or, uh, sorry, Abdullah ibn Mubarak. They told him, if you are given the news that you only have two days left and then you'll die, what would you do? And he was a person of understanding, a person of knowledge. Mm-hmm. He said, I would go to the masjid and teach people. Mm-hmm. They asked him why. He said, because when you teach people, that knowledge will spread, will multiply. And it's like, just like, uh, you know, the, the example, the same parable of a snowball. It keeps mm-hmm. rolling and getting bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. So that would be a, an ongoing sadaqah. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate, I mean, Ramadan is time of worship mm-hmm. and uh, most of the scholars of the early generations, like Imam Malik, Sufyan al-Thawri, even Abdullah ibn Mubarak himself, uh, Muhammad ibn Sirin, even Bukhari, when it came to Ramadan, they would give, give up the lessons and the circles mm-hmm. and they would just keep to recite the Quran and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That would be the best thing. Mm-hmm. But just looking at the state of our ummah and when, when, when you realize that with a TV show you can really try to help yourself and some of our brothers and sisters benefit, inshallah, mm-hmm. 
that acts as, acts as a consolation mm -hmm. because instead of just dedicating our time to worship, especially at, during the night, Definitely. but we, we, we're trying to share some information. Once we see it's beneficial, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel really grateful, thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for making that easy for us. And I really appreciate that comment. Uh, answering sister's, uh, Sister Sabah's question about forgiveness, well, that's relatively a bit different, but how we seek forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forgives His servants. And once we acknowledge our mistakes, our shortcomings, our sins, mm -hmm. and we declare that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the Prophet ﷺ taught us Sayyid al-Istighfar, the best formula for istighfar, that you say, Allahumma uh, la ilaha illa ant. You testify that Allah is the only one who has the right to be worshipped, the only one who deserves your ultimate love and fear. La ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana abduk. You created me and I am your servant, so I'm nothing. You brought me into existence. And I am basically nothing, I'm worthless. Mm -hmm. And I renew my pledge to be obedient to, to you to the best of my ability. But I acknowledge my weakness. Mm -hmm. I seek protection in you from the evil outcomes of my actions, of my own sins. So you, you express to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your weakness, your helplessness, and Allah's ability to forgive you and to set your affairs right. Uh, that you entrust your affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Show, show your inability and the ability of Allah. Show, you, show your helplessness before the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ أَهْدِكَ وَوَعْدِكَ مَسْتَطَعْتَ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا صَنَعْتَ أَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيَّ وَأَبُوءُ بِذَنْبِي I acknowledge your great bounty on me. And I acknowledge my sin and my transgression against your limits. I acknowledge that. And I admit that with all humbleness. Forgive my sins, because no one forgives the sins apart except you. So you show complete submission before Allah. You acknowledge your mistakes. You acknowledge your helplessness. And you acknowledge the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That would be the best etiquette to mm -hmm. seek forgiveness. But you can't seek forgiveness while you're still insisting on a sin. Definitely. You can't do that. That that's actually would be an act of an, impro an inappropriate uh, deed or thing to do when it comes to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And inshallah, by being aware of the greatness of Allah, this would help us, as I said, forgive other people, be forgiving towards them, pardon them. Be accommodating when it comes in, in, to dealing with people. Overcome their mistakes. Just as the examples we mentioned of the Prophet ﷺ, how great he was, how forgiving he was. And make your heart attached to the hereafter. This will help you, inshallah, forgive people when it comes to matters of this world. Definitely. And I think we have a phone call. We have uh, Brother Hussein from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Welcome to One Step Closer. Yes, Sheikh. I want to show my appreciation for being like a Muslim and we Nigerians we are very happy for listening to you always and exactly. we want to pray for Huda for enlightening people towards the Islamic and we are really happy so please keep it off and we are happy Jazakallah Khairah we don't have uh, money that we can support you, but we can support you with our uh, 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 with our prayers. Inshallah, may God bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, brother. May Allah reward you. And uh, money is not everything. We have something more precious than that. Uh, you just make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for everyone here to extend the da'wah of Islam, spread it and convey it. And uh, that Allah grants us sincerity in all of this. And dua is much more powerful than money. And the means, if our intentions are sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and if we do and whatever we can and exert our efforts, inshallah, we'll be able to do better than those who have money. So, uh, but that's, there's also an, also an invitation to people whom Allah has blessed with wealth and with money you know, look at the, uh, the, the, the other organizations that support other religions, those who spread Christianity, and they 
take advantage of people's poverty, people, people's illnesses, and uh, people's uh, ignorance about the reality of everything, of what's going on. And they try to dupe them into believing into something they don't really believe in. Mm-hmm. And uh, try, as I said, to take advantage of people's conditions. That, that's inappropriate. So why? They, they spend billions, yearly, they spend billions on these campaigns and those missionary. And uh, people from different backgrounds actually take part in that. Mm-hmm. And why don't Muslims do that? Why are Muslims always so divided? Why are the rich Muslims always, um, not all of them obviously, there are great individuals, may Allah bless their money, bless their wealth, may Allah grant them paradise. But why do we have many rich Muslims who act indifferently when it comes to the issues of the ummah? That's your responsibility. The money you have, you will be asked about it. What did you do? Many great, you know, many, there are rich people, extremely rich people among the Muslims. And, you know, paying sometimes millions is just like paying pennies to other people. And they don't even consider helping any effort of da'wah. You're going to be held accountable for that. And none of this money goes to the pockets of, of, of human beings or any of the people who are involved in this. All of, these, all of this money, all of your contributions are meant to increase the quality of the programs in terms of content and in, in terms of shape as well. So that's a general invitation. May Allah reward you, brother, for your great feelings. And it really helps us and it's more important to us than any money or any uh, financial support. Definitely. And we have brother uh, uh, Hussein from Nigeria. Ibrahim. We have brother Ibrahim from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to one step closer, brother. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, brother. Uh, my brother, I need uh, more information about, uh, information about uh, this Allahumma antar of la ilaha ilaha. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I need uh, more information. More information about that. What is it? What is it about this? Uh, the, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Which dua again, brother? La ilaha illallah. Subhanahu wa Taala. The same supplication we mentioned. Yes. What do you want about that? Okay. What about this supplication, brother? What What is your question? I think I think he was saying the translation of the of the dua. Yeah, I generally translated it. I paraphrased the meaning in English. So generally, it's just about acknowledging our weakness Mm -hmm. and the greatness of Allah, His bounty and our transgression, Mm -hmm. and making that clear and Mm -hmm. uh, manifesting our dedication and pledge to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and showing that only Allah can forgive our sins. Mm -hmm. So that's the main theme of the the dua. And uh, the the dua is found in all the books that talk about supplication. It's the best dua for istighfar, for seeking Allah's forgiveness. And we have another phone call. We have Brother Muhammad from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Alaikum salam. Thank you very much. I I thank Sheikh for his wonderful and educative program on forgiveness. May Allah increase him in knowledge and wisdom. Amen. Jazakallah. Uh, About this forgiveness, it it was just this evening I had from the BBC that uh, is it American trying to maybe celebrate uh, September 11th you know, that they were going to ban Quran or something of this nature. So in this question of forgiveness, these people, what is, we Muslim, what is our action supposed to be? Should we forgive them or we should take all possible actions? Sir. Okay, uh, take, I mean. brother, I think you were saying that uh, uh, we forgive, we should forgive the Americans for their aggression against us. I, I didn't get the question. I think he was, that's what he was saying. He, like, what should our stance would be for, uh, against Americans or, or those who are occupying our lands or, and actually oppressing okay. us? Okay, Gen- generally yeah. speaking, generally speaking, uh, forgiveness is a great act of worship and mm-hmm. we should have it, display it to others. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to people, mm-hmm. over, that, this is with matters pertaining to the dunya, but when people confiscate your land, mm-hmm. take your land, take your liberty, mm. and they fight you in terms of religion, mm. and uh, they disrespect every value, every belief that you have, and they dis- disrespect every right you have, that's, you know, no one argues with this, that you have the right to defend yourself, mm-hmm. and you have the right to stand for your rights, mm-hmm. and take back your rights, obviously. So no one argues about this. When it comes to forgiveness, uh, obviously forgiveness, like, like forgiveness, you also have to be, the Prophet ﷺ says, المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف. Now forgiveness has its areas, mm-hmm. and uh, standing for your rights has its areas. Mm-hmm. Each, each condition is different. Mm-hmm. 
So we cannot, for example, when we say the Prophet ﷺ was always forgiving, now uh, he, he, in the Battle of Badr, he fought against the Mushrikeen mm-hmm. because that's not the time for forgiveness. Okay? In the battlefield, you can't forgive someone who's coming to kill you or say, I'll forgive you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. So we just use forgiveness in its right place. Mm-hmm. And uh, w- whenever you need to act, defend your rights, then you have the right to do that. No one argues about this. It's, n- it's not even not even people. I'm not to- even talking about only about Muslims, but any person with who has uh, the normal level of common sense, they understand this. So forgiveness has its area, mm-hmm. and standing for your right has its area. Obviously, no one argues about this. Mm. So I, I I just saw the question to be. Somehow irrelevant. I hope that you know. Once we understand, once we talk, about, once we talk about any concept in Islam or any etiquette, you know, we're talking within the context of life. We're not speaking in abstract terms. Mm-hmm. Like when I say uh, we have rahmah, the Prophet ﷺ had rahmah as well. But many times he had to be harsh. When you need to be harsh, you have to be harsh. So uh, there's a balance. So obviously we can't. I mean, bring on any possibility that could go through the mind of everybody. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, generally speaking. Forgiveness has its own area, uh, or its own areas, and in other areas you need to use other tools. Obviously, that's that's common sense. Mm-hmm. I believe we have a phone call. We have Brother Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, Brother. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to One Step Closer. I want to ask about forgiveness. Yes. Go ahead, Brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you offended someone, and you seek for forgiveness, mm-hmm. and that person insists to forgive you. He refuses to forgive you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then. What, how are you going to do about it? Okay. Okay. Once okay, yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, brother, for the question. Once you try your best, you wronged someone, so you seek his forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You seek his forgiveness with anything that he requests. For example, you've like you've destroyed. Uh, you you spoke bad about them. You destroyed his reputation or you made a bad remark, negative remark about him. And you say to him, okay, I made a mistake, I'm sorry, and I, want, I ask your forgiveness, I ask your pardon. If he says to you, well, I'm not happy, you have, for example, to pay me $100, any compensation, okay? If it's reasonable, if it's reasonable, then you have to pay him. So, but if you just try to say that to that person, forgive me, okay, I've done wrong, and whatever it is, and he says, I just don't want to forgive you, don't worry, then he will be taken for that. He will be held, held responsible and accountable for that. So you've done your part of the job, don't worry. We have another phone call. We have Sister Adela from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, wa alaikum assalam. Um, I actually need to give the telephone to my mom. Um, I live in Jeddah, but uh, we are originally from South Africa. Sure. And uh, my mom uh, is staying with me in Jeddah and... Uh, She's been watching uh, your program, we both, and uh, on behalf of me also, she would really, really like to say something. And um, from you also, I just want to say shukran, and I wish both of you and uh, uh, everything of the best for the days that left, and may Allah accept all your du'as and uh, ibadah, inshallah. Ameen. 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 Uh, hold on, here's my mom, huh? Okay. okay. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To you, Sheikh, and your presenter. Thank you very much. I am from South Africa, and I really, really, your program was really inspiring. Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. Allah, I think when I go home, I will take everything to me. And may Allah tell accept all, all your good. And what you have put out to all mankind. Alhamdulillah. There's sometimes, now I'm very nervous that I feel to cry. But shukran to you, Sheikh. All the best for you and your good words you have laid out to the world. To the world. Alhamdulillah. Shukran, and you have a nice eat and your presenter. Thank you very much. May, may Allah bless you and bless your family. And uh, uh, we really appreciate these dua and these supplication. May Allah reward you for that. And we, we really feel it. We feel that. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. I'm just overwhelmed with the, with the kindness of our viewers. And I, I feel really happy that we've managed to help our brothers and sisters, inshallah, move a few steps closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, to learn more about forgiveness, please stay with us.
until we come back from the short break, we'll be right back. Love, I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand The Philosophy of Islamic Law, a program for restoring belief and trust within Muslims' mind and heart, and for re-establishing a true concept of Islamic rules for others. covering the manners in Islam that a Muslim is supposed to have in Islam. There is a strong link between having good manners and piety. And then he said, I guarantee a dwelling in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner. That indeed, truthfulness leads to piety, to righteousness. And righteousness and piety leads to Jannah. Uh, the Prophet used to always uh, maintain family ties. Gentleness in Islam means to treat people with kindness and with tenderness. Back to the Prophet. Join Sheikh Amar in the program Back to the Prophet, wherein he teaches us practical lessons from the Prophet's life and how this can help us to overcome our challenges in the present. We talk about the life example of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him, seeking guidance for ourselves. In the early days after the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Muslims were greatly persecuted, so much so that Quite a few Muslims had to leave Arabia and migrate to Africa to live among Ahl Kitab, Christian people who followed the Gospel of Christ. Back to the Prophet in Ramadan on Hoda TV. Love, I am just a simple man. Trying hard to understand. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to One Step Closer. And we have Sister Umm Ammar from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to One Step Closer. Naam, jazakallah khairan. First of all, I'd like to say uh, jazakallah khairan to everybody at One Step Closer and even Huda TV as a whole. May Allah have mercy on all of us. May Allah accept our fasting, our Amen. prayers our sujood, our du'a, and everything that we have tried to do in this month of Ramadan. Amen. May Allah count us from the successful this month. Jazakum Allah khairan. And secondly, the brother that called in from Nigeria earlier, I, I think I heard what he said. He was saying that the issue in America right now, the church that wants to burn a Quran, or everybody bring a Quran so that they can burn it, this is supposed to be uh, on the September mm. September 11th. He was asking... Should we forgive these people, or what is the appropriate action that we mm. should take as Muslims? Okay. That's what he asked. So okay. I just wanted to clarify that as well. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah have mercy on us and Ameen. keep us in your du'a. Amen. You too. Alaykum. 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 Thank you very much. I really, uh, thank you very much, sister, for that. Um, okay. Allah um, al-musta'an. This just shows the, the, the weakness of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. And uh, forgiveness has no place here. I mean, as as Muslims, we can we we shouldn't react violently to that on per, on a personal in, on a personal basis or individual basis. So the best thing to do is to keep our restraint. And believe me, these uh, nasty actions or these nasty demonstrations or whatever these guys are doing, I mean, they try. They, they have a goal behind this. Some of them are so naive, but the people behind them are very intelligent. They know what they are doing. They just want to increase the negative image about Islam, that Muslims are just savages, Muslims are backward, Muslims just react violently. Mm -hmm. But as Muslims, okay, 
they're going to do that. We don't have, an author- we don't have authority in America to stop that. Mm-hmm. If we can stop that by any means, civilized means, I mean, and, and I'm s- saying civilized in Islamic terminology. I'm not saying talking about any Western terminology. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if we can stop that in civilized means, that would be great. Anyone who can stop that in a civilized way, then it's an obligation uh, to stop it. But if we can't do that, then we have to realize our historical responsibility as Muslims today, at this time, that as Muslims, you can't just stay at home, uh, look after our, your, the affairs of your family and yourself, and just say, that's it, I'm all right. No. We all shoulder a responsibility of holding Islam today, defending it. You know, as I said, as I usually and continuously say, that each one of us is gifted in a field, in one of the fields. Mm-hmm. So where's your area of contribution to Islam? Those who have knowledge about any field, they, they should utilize that. Those who are good in administration, in leadership management, should uh, use that, these skills in furthering the cause of Islam, spreading Islam, helping any, the cause of any Muslims in any country. Mm-hmm. Those who have the wealth, they should contribute in that field. Those who have any political power, diplomatic power, they, they should exercise that power to further the cause of Islam. Once we have this unified theme and mentality, Mentality, and we are all uh, heading to in the same direction, then we will start to build a momentum that will change the state of the Muslims. This is what we should do. And we shouldn't be short-sighted. We have to build the long-term strategy, mm-hmm. even as individuals, of what we are planning to do, mm-hmm. where we want to, where, we, where, where, where do we see the Muslims, or where, where we see the Muslims will be in 25 years. What will happen to Islam in 25 years? We're, all, we're always reacting to things that, ha- that are happening. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be caught up in that corner. We should break from that, these barriers, and we should develop a longer term strategy. Mm -hmm. That's the only way for Muslims to uh, control the terms and to to set the terms for the world instead of just, uh, you know, being cornered all of the time and reacting to to Mm -hmm. such crazy acts. Allah al-Musta'an. Thank you, Sheikh, for this beautiful word. Thank you. Uh, We have uh, Brother Muhammad from UAE. Salaamu Alaikum, Brother. Wa Alaikum Salaam. How are you, sir? Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah fiqh, yes. Alhamdulillah, akhi. Alhamdulillah. I am calling from UAE, but I am originally from Pakistan, actually. Yeah, yeah. Brother? Yeah, I want to ask about the zakat. The zakat. The zakat. Uh, okay, brother, I prefer any fiqh question, please. If you have any fiqh question, you can send it to Ask Huda at huda.tv. But if, still, if you still insist, uh, insist, I really appreciate it because we're running out of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, send the question to the email. And inshallah, I will give you a detailed answer. Uh, just to keep the show on track so we don't want to get an overlap with another show. So I really ask your forgiveness when it comes to this. But if you have any question relate, uh, related to our subject, our topic, you're welcome to have that. Okay, I think the brother's gone. Jazakallah khair, brother. Jazakallah okay. khair, brother. Sheikh, back to our topic, forgiveness. I think if we look at the examples of the Salaf, of, the, of, the, of our great generations, we will learn from their forgiveness or from their example how to forgive others. Like the example that Abdullah, uh, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, when Abdullah, Abdul, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan generally is t- misdisplayed by a lot of uh, people, unfortunately, especially because what the Shia say about him. Yes. Uh, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, one time, uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair, he had a form. And the workers... Of Abdullah ibn, uh, of Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan used to enter his farm, so Abdullah ibn Zubayr thought that was an insult. You know, why the workers of Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan are doing that to me? Is that an insult? So he took a piece of paper and he wrote them a message. He wrote, "You, you the son of the woman who eats liver or the liver eater," meaning that because his mother Hind, Hind bin Adba, yes. she ate the liver of Hamza, and he told them, "Tell your farmers or your soldiers, workers, to get out of my farm." So Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan. He took the message and he asked the people around him, what do you think I should do? They said, you should kill him. He said, no, 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 I won't do that. So he took the paper and he wrote, the son of uh, of Dhatul Nataqim and the the son of the companion of the Prophet Come take my form to your form and take my workers to your workers. And he sent them the message. And so Abdullah ibn Zubayr, when he read that message, he cried. Of his reaction. Subhanallah. So yeah. that's Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Yes. He's a great Sahabi, a great yes. companion. Yes, actually, mm-hmm. our history is full with such great mm-hmm. uh, examples. And really, uh, uh, as, I, uh, as I said previously, the afu or forgiveness is mm-hmm. done in its right place. 
the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers adillatin ala al-mu'minin a'izzatin ala al-kafirin that with the believers that are so soft and tolerant mm-hmm. with the disbelievers who fight them who transgress against Islam mm-hmm. uh, who stop the da'wah of Islam with these people they're harsh so that's the balance yes. we use each of these traits in its right place that's the balance we should get and that's the balance that we should hold on to Perfect. and hopefully inshallah uh, as Muslims we should have mercy and forgiveness mm-hmm. towards one another mm-hmm. this is what we should have this is what we should think about inshallah. Sheikh unfortunately we are out of time Alhamdulillah. good time feels always to fly by yeah I just thank all of you our viewers who called in today and the ones who sent us emails may Allah reward them I mean and dear viewers please try to forgive one another try to tolerate one another try to have big hearts so this ummah will become strong once again, will live in peace once again. And I thank you all for sending us your emails and questions. And I thank you all for watching One Step Closer. And wait for us tomorrow for another worship that will take us a step closer to Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand Where's my place in your great plan, oh Lord? Lord, I am just a simple man Trying hard to understand Where's my place in your great plan, oh Lord? Help this man